well, I think it's been a long time coming and it's necessary. It's like redressing something that was ignored, not given enough respect. I think maybe it was in the early 2000s in the Venice Biennale, there started to be quite a lot of African countries represented and it grew from there. And it was then I think that Africa was taken more seriously, um, the African artists and their work um, on the world stage. Um, you know, I, I, I guess it's just a part of the, of the, 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 the mistakes of history that museums and institutions have always looked at American art and European art and given precedence to this work in this art. I mean, and this is now, uh, the, the, the politics have changed. And so that's why this is happening. Um, it's very much a wave one feels is, is has a lot of, um, yeah, there's, um, it's, it's a wave, it has momentum. I don't know, I think it will continue for some time. I think it's come alongside and parallel with the um, impulse of Black Lives Matter. Oh, actually for me, um, I benefited. I find it, I found it was a time where I could really focus and be very single-minded and undistracted by other events and other things going on. It didn't change much from my work practice. It was just um, a kind of more, even more enforced routine, which I liked. Um, and, 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 like, and oddly in the beginning, it gave me time to explore another medium. I haven't worked in collage there was time to sort of just explore with what, with what you had and make do, and maybe also a sense of wanting to respond to this pandemic in a new way. It wasn't easy just to go back to the canvas and paint in the same old way you were painting, just to continue. One felt a need to just respond and possibly do something different. So I started cutting up this old, um, collection of magazines I had. I have this book that I found on a flea market and it's um, a, a compilation of magazines collected by someone throughout the 50s and 60s of uh, mostly of art, art magazines. I've read before about collage making and sometimes it's um, a way for artists to quite there's a kind of a, I've read something about a precedent of artists using that cutting, fragmenting, tearing somehow feels appropriate in the face of a difficult <clears throat> environment. Okay. Well, I think, um, so I've been working with those kind of images for some time now, maybe 10, 10 years or more. And they are what we, they are kind of everyday images and the photographs that I work from are vernacular, everyday, happy snap type of photo, found photo mostly, not my own. But I think what, what is important to say about why this content is all something to do with them. Um, I was born in apartheid South Africa and I raised a family in post-apartheid South Africa. And I felt to, to locate myself as, as, a, as a painter and find my material and my subject, it was important, it is important to, to speak about what is authentic to my lifestyle, um, to, my, to my status, my class. Uh, growing up, in this country, one's very, very aware of difference and privilege. So perhaps then by painting swimming pools, gardens, backyards, freeways, um, these things where people are also usually in some kind of state of leisure um, and comfort, it was authentic to, to, to my own experience, yet hopefully suggesting the problems with that, that there's, an, there's the underbelly 
of the comforts of wealth, that there's also with, with that leisure comes malaise um, and boredom and ennui and even hedonism or disregard or recklessness. Well, in that, I remember in that particular painting, not wanting to individualize someone. I think quite often with my figures, I, 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 I mostly prefer not to describe the facial features too clearly. I prefer the figure to be more like a cipher, more like something very generalized. Um, because the moment one gives the features of the face, it becomes someone you know or don't know. I think I've always worked with dark and light yeah. throughout the, the years of painting, that I come and go from a, a dark, subdued palette that maybe re is responding to the image I'm working with. It's, it's more specifically, to do with whatever the content of that image is, whether it requires um, something that is more monochromatic or subdued and, and a different image requires color. It's not to do with any time period in my working yeah. practice. So I like to work with very saturated color sometimes. It's, it's more about evoking a mood. I think atmosphere is very important to me in my paintings. Yeah. And the darker yeah. ones do have, um, obviously a very different atmosphere to the, to the colorful ones, but I enjoy paint and application of paint and exploration and giving myself also just the challenge of a full palette. So many, but I think if we, if we go back to black and dark paintings, um, the work of Goya and Manet, where they use black, for its sense of drama and influence for me. Um, also, yeah, the, 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 the atmosphere that's evoked through quite high contrast with someone like, did I say Monet? Did I say Manet? It's Manet I'm talking about, yeah, where you see the strong blacks and in Goya too. But then generally, I think with my work, the, the, the period I'm most, um, drawn to or influenced by is the kind of 60s, 70s British pop. So I'm the artists like Arby Kitage and David Hockney, Francis Bacon, even Richard Hamilton to an extent. I think for, for me that what I love is that they are very bold in their color use and their sense of design and composition is very dynamic. They often have a, a wonderful sense of um, the, the sort of abstract plane alongside the figurative, like take Francis Bacon as an example, you know, as we know, the, the, he's worked with these very um, disturbing and, and raw kind of figurative elements that are so unsettling and so interesting. And that combination for me is exciting. Um, I don't think that, not pop in a sense of their, I think what their work was transmitting was maybe sometimes something more banal in, in terms of what was happening, you know, from Andy Warhol onwards and consumerism and the kind of messaging that they were, were, were transmitting was very different to mine now. But I think what I'm saying is with, um, um, yeah, it's, so for example, with David Hockney, for me, it's his earlier work. I think he became more decorative um, once he went to Los Angeles, but earlier on, uh, that I, I'm very drawn to that work. And, and particularly Kitaj, who's I think a very unrecognized, un, undervalued artist. I think um, Surio, from when I was a young artist, I thought, I wish I had an ungendered name. I wish I, you know, in English we have names like Peter and Robin that can be male or female. And very early on, I thought this might be to my advantage if I had a different name. Anyway, it's, it's you know, it's obvious that 
we all know that women have been less recognized in, in, in the institutions and the galleries and their work doesn't have the same value, but <laughs> it is changing. <laughs> there are these women who've been working for 50 years or more who finally get their shows at the big at the big museums when they turn 90. So this is, this is a good sign that, that things are moving. Um, you know, for me also, I think I was affected by a motherhood um, that, I, that I had ch three children. That doesn't go very smoothly for an art career, having children, um, but it was, a, it was a good choice. It was the right choice, um, but it gives one, sometimes there's just a perception that you're not taken as seriously, strangely when you have children that you can't be as serious an artist, which is, which is bizarre, but I think it's a common perception. Of course, it can add so much material and depth to your work, but this isn't always, it isn't always seen that way. I make figurative paintings and there are male and female figures and sometimes less gendered figures. I don't, I don't think I have a preference, but I do make um, images where there are both and sometimes there's, there's the struggles between the, the, the genders. There's sometimes, yeah. a, sometimes there's um, a sense of the power play or the, the vulnerability or even the gender stereotypes. They're, they're conversations that are there in the work. Thank you.